Lord shared with me this morning. Verse number 1, the Bible says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years, a long time. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Look with me at verse number 7, if you will. The impotent man answered him, Sir, that was a good response, I have no man when the water is troubled, watch this, to put me into the pool. In other words, he could not get into the pool on his own. And I want to preach a message to you on this thought this morning. How I got in. He was trying his best to get in. But he couldn't get in. He didn't have the strength nor the power to get into the pool. There was a lot of other people around him. He had a great desire to get in that pool and get help from his troubles and his problems in his life. I see a few things by way of introduction concerning salvation around this pool of Bethesda. Number one, we learn from this story that salvation is not based on man's will alone. Amen. The Bible speaks in the book of John Chapter number one, that man is not born of the will of man, but he's born again of the will of God. A man can be born again only as God wills, not he wills. Amen. This picture here of this man at the pool of Bethesda, he had a desire to get in. Many people have a desire for their life to be straightened out, for their problem to be solved. This shows you and I the urgency of the opportunity. When God gives you an opportunity to get in, you better not make too much time about it. You better make the best of every opportunity that God may have for you. You do not get saved when you decide to get saved. No man can get saved except the Spirit of God draw him. Salvation is not based upon whether or not you want it or not. Salvation is based upon the opportunity that God gives a man. I still believe that conviction is a part of salvation. Man must be drawn by the Holy Ghost. It's more than just a prayer. It's more than a promise. It's more than you just saying, I do. It's God saying, I will. And God must give you the opportunity to get saved or you never will get saved. Man's will is not his will, but God's will that you get saved. Number two, we learn from this story 
that salvation is not based entirely on man's will, but we also learn that salvation is not based entirely on the miracle water. This water here was a drawing factor. This water was what was drawing the multitudes there. These guys on TV, they try to sell you miracle water. Jesus proved the point here that you don't have to have miracle water because this man never got in the water. Right. A lot of people in some denominations, whether they're Catholic or Church of Christ or Lutheran, believe in water baptismal regeneration. They believe except you get in the water, you cannot be made whole of your disease. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say that Jesus can bypass the water. Amen. You don't need the water to get in. Right. You don't have to have a bottle of miracle water. Miracle water ain't nothing but water. And there is nothing that the water could do that Jesus hadn't already done. Number three, we learn from this story that salvation is not based on man's will. It's not based on miracle water, but it's also not based on meeting where you are. This guy had showed up where all of these miracles had took place. He had had a problem for 38 years. Just because you're here doesn't mean you're in. Whether you get in or not is entirely up to you. That's right. There's a lot of people that come, but they never seem to get in. Matter of fact, there's more people looking to get out than they are getting in. That's good. Amen. This guy had a desire to get in, but just because somebody may go to church, that don't mean you're in. You got to get in. Some people say, "Well, how do you get in?" I I want to be healed of my disease, my problems, and my sickness, and all of this, friend. What it all boils down to is this: You know if you're in or not. Have you ever had a personal encounter with the Lord in Jesus the Christ? Yeah. Have you ever had anything come over you and you knew your sins was forgiven? You repented and trusted Christ by faith, and He saved you. You know if you've ever been in or not. Some people say you just can't know for sure if you're in. Some people say, well, I hope I'm in. You didn't have to ask nobody there if they'd been in or not. The ones that had got in know it. The ones that hadn't got in, they know it. This crowd that don't know for sure if you've ever got in, you ain't never got in. You'll know if you ever get in by the results of what happens when you do get in. I'll never forget what happened to me the night that I got in August the 18th, 1995. This boy, ever since that day, I've not had to worry about whether I'm really in or not. I knew that I had gotten in. And ever since that day, it's as if I've been staying by the pool trying to help others get in. As the angel of God comes down and stirs the water, I try to get people in and try to get them to get in and try to get them to get in. Some people refuse. And for you to reject Christ would be like somebody here in this story having an opportunity to get in and you're refusing that opportunity. Right. Some people couldn't get in because the water wasn't moving. Nothing was stirred. You see, the angel of God had to come down at a certain season and stir that water. The reason some people aren't getting in today is not that they're not in the place, but the waters ain't stirred. The problem in our churches today is ain't nothing stirred up your house. Many people's going to the well, they're going to the pool, and they're looking for help, but there's nothing happening. There's yeah. nothing but a bunch of dead, dried up right. services. Nobody's heart stirred. Right. Nobody's moved. Nobody's influenced right. in any way, oh, say, or form. We're living in a day. We're yes. around the pool. It's not that people don't need help, but we've sold out the stirring and the moving of the yeah. water for contemporary worship and the deadness of Christianity yes, right. and just the tradition of man and come to church as we wish and so desire and changing the incorruptible God The problem 
with most is they don't want to stir in That's their right, church. Right. Yeah. They want to live in their sin. Yep. They want to love their lifestyle All right. and live as they wish and please. Yes, right. As long as the preacher don't get too loud, oh, hey. too long, and slobber too much. Yeah. When there was a day that hell was preached hot and heaven was preached beautiful. Amen. That's what it took to get people in, friend. Yes. I'll tell you why I got in. I didn't get up by some puppet reading a sermon out of a magazine. Amen. I got in because a man of God right. wasn't afraid to preach the truth. Yeah. Hell Stone. I didn't like Go it at the time neither. But the Holy Ghost of God came down and quenched my thirst brother. in my soul. Amen. And I got in in the old fashioned way. Amen. Today, right. it's more about the money yes, sir. and the masses. Yes, instead of the movement. Go ahead, brother. There's more people want to go and be socially accepted. Instead of their life being changed. Amen. Most people say preach it hard and preach it straight. As long as it don't stir my life That's up. Right. The problem with our churches today in America is we got a bunch of liberal theologians in the pulpit yes, trying sir. to change and left the old fashioned way of old time Christianity. Amen. And now we're leaving things the way that they are. Free of this time. churches ain't stirred go to most of them That's right. even here Amen. a lot of times some of you people here you need to be stirred up Amen. it's been a long time since you felt God do anything in your life Amen. we live out in this world we fight tooth and nail to stay on top of things spiritually yes. we go home we turn on the TV I'm not going to bash everybody's TV I probably got as big a one as anybody in here but I'll go home, we'll watch our TV. Right. We can't wait to watch the football game, especially Boy, yeah. when Duke beats Carolina. Amen. 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 Uh, <laughs> revival just broke out in Bethel. Or a split. I think we got a split. Some of y'all ain't liked all day. I said, hey, I felt something right there. Oh, we'll watch Auburn beat Alabama. I bet they ain't rolled tight down there today. <laughs> Florida State took it to the Gators. Where's the Gator fans? Not good. Kind of like a Braves fan. You can't find one unless they're in the World Series. I'm a diehard Yankee fan if they didn't even win the pennant. <laughs> we'll get all called up and captivated in that. Or the political news of our day that everybody was going to get to keep their health insurance, period, if they liked it. Only to come to find out that the government told us a lie. Can you believe that? Oh, yes. And then we get on there and we see the news and we get captivated by there are affairs in our life. And we get caught up in that only to come to church. And what we need in the house of God is for a little while. Yeah. Only forget about the ball game. Oh, forget God. about the political party. Yeah. And forget about what's going on out there. What we need in the house of God is a stirring and a moving of old time religion. That's what to solve our problem. Oh, God. Yes, sir. Some of us in here saying, well, I just don't feel good. I need to go to the doctor. No. A lot of us get where we don't feel good. But what most of us need in here, we need to visit the great physician. Amen. And we need the power of God to stir and move among His Amen. people. So we'll be more excited about the things of God instead of what's going on in Hollywood Amen. or some freak show or even Sandy Claus. Y'all don't worry, I'm not going to do what I've done about 14 or 15 years ago here. <laughs> 14 or 15 years ago, y'all wouldn't like me, I promise you that. I guarantee you I could clean this house out in about 0 0.5 seconds. Yeah. 
Some of y'all say, well, what'd you do? I walked Santa Claus right down the aisle and crucified that fat rat. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong. I enjoy all the holidays. I enjoy eating. Y'all can tell that. I enjoy the giving. Because me and my wife sure do give to our kids. <laughs> They're getting their inheritance a little bit at a time. And we like to eat out a lot, so the rest goes to the septic tank. That's right. <laughs> Buy them a cow or a horse and let them eat the green grass. That's what they'll get for an inheritance. We've got to go buy this gift, and we've got to buy that gift. This person's got to have that. And when it's all over with, the kids don't even want the toys you bought them anyway. They'd rather color on the box. Right. Used to make me so mad. My little kids, you'd buy them a beautiful little kitchen set. Stay up till 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning at 10. Trying to figure out the directions that are so confused. And call me on hell! <laughs> You're looking for a cordless drill because that screwdriver's done wore your wrist out trying to tie it. And it tells you plainly to use a screwdriver, not a drill, because you have the potential of busting it, cracking it. And then it won't work! <laughs> Thank God for duct tape. <laughs> I hope whoever invented that goes to heaven because I want to hug their neck when they get there. Or when I get there. My kids wouldn't even end up playing with it very long until they'd want to make a little playhouse out of the box. Yeah. The box! We're broke! Because we bought the gift! And they ain't the box! <laughs> Can't even help ourselves or put gas in the truck! But my kids had a great pre Christmas. Can't even feed a dog! Let him eat the scraps! We spend all of our time building up for this one grand thing. Can't even wait for Thanksgiving to get over. We gotta rush into ho ho and jingle bells. Y'all get wrong, I ain't no Scrooge now. I'm, I'm just telling it like it is. I'm telling what some of y'all been wanting to say for years. We have a gut. We build up for one big thing. No, I'm not. We spend all this money. You're right. To buy people gifts they really don't want, and you know it. That's why you bought it. Right. <laughs> I used to hate Aqua Vale by Brute. <laughs> God rest my wife's grandmother, Miss Ross. I love her to death. She's dead and in glory right now, but she used to give me the ugliest. I mean the ugliest ties a man has ever seen. I think that's one of the reasons why years ago I switched to bolos. It's hard to find an ugly one of them. <laughs> then we come to church after Christmas is in broke, depressed, Stressed out. How in the world are we going to make it? Last month's house payment went to belts. <laughs> or coach out. Amen. Or Tommy Hill figure. I think we're to let him figure it out. <laughs> oh, because we, we wanted to have a big old Christmas. Yes, sir, you're right. I love it, I love it, I love it. But why can't we put some of that emphasis into having a big old church service yeah. when we come to the house of God and we get stirred up? Yes, sir. Amen. Why do we need to be stirred? Because that's all the time people get help. Amen. I just don't like that church. It moves me too much. That's where you need to be. Yeah, yeah. That's where you need to be. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're I don't right. like to be moved. I had somebody tell me this morning, said, you going to step on my toes this morning? I said, I hope not. I hope he does. <laughs> they said, oh, was your daddy preaching? I said, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've come to the conclusion that all a preacher really is is a glorified cheerleader <laughs> and a water getter. What we do, we come to church, and that preacher's up here priming the way, priming the bump on the way, trying our dead little best to stir that water up enough to get it to come to the top so you'll see what you've really got Amen. and start enjoying it. That's all I do. That's all I do. And then people get mad at you because you stirred the water up a little too much and brought it up. <laughs> but this man, nobody could get in without help. I ain't got no message yet. Y'all give me this second. I'm going to get down. I'm going to throw it out at you real quick. All right. This man, I said, I have nobody. In other words, he could not get in on his own. And anybody that's ever got in, you didn't get in on, you did not get in by yourself. Amen, brother. We all had some help get in. I'm just glad I did get in. <laughs> and I ain't regretted it, not Mary Tyler. Amen. They don't try to make me ashamed of it right after I got saved. Try to make embarrassment, embarrassment out of me, but I couldn't even hide. It was on me. So, oh, yeah. so I didn't get to tell my friends. They know that I got in. They started pointing me and shunning me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's walking a little different than he did. He's yeah. walking a different way. He must have got into something. Oh, yeah. He's thinking, what's he got into? <laughs> His voice has changed. He ain't using those words. He's got into something's got into him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, I got in it and it got in me. Right? Yeah. And then we both got in God. <laughs> I wish y'all could feel what I'm feeling right now. Let me tell you how I got in. I had some help getting in. You see, I was waiting a long time. I wanted to get in, but I couldn't, Brother Wayne. Let me tell you how I got in. Number one, I got in because of prayer of parents. Amen. That's one thing that helped me get in. I'm going to tell you that. I had a praying parents. I had a praying mama and a praying daddy. Some people say, well, but your parents and your family and didn't make it. No, listen to me. There ain't nobody's family perfect. Ain't nobody's marriage perfect. But this one thing I do know. My daddy's told me a thousand times when I was a little baby boy. It was on a cold winter day and they're supposed to win late brick. And I was there at home with my daddy all by himself. He'd come over there to me in a crib and I don't remember a thing about it. But he said he laid his hands on me and he gave me back to God. And ever since that day, he ain't worried about me. I've heard my mama say the same thing, son. I prayed for your soul a many a time. And even though their relationship never worked out, my relationship with God showed up the yeah. I'm glad that the God of glory heard the yeah. prayers yeah. of my mama and daddy. That's why I'm in this morning. It's because they didn't stop praying for me. Amen. Amen. Those nights I'd come home in a drunken stupor and I'm not proud of it. I remember even before I got saved, I'd go home, me and Dad living by herself. And by the way, Dad's been married, happily married to Miss Wanda for several years. And I don't even know how long now. On time, long enough, he's gray-headed and she is still blonde-headed. But so much for that. <laughs> I remember coming home and me and Daddy was living by herself, having alcohol in my breath. And Daddy looking at me and said, son, you been drinking? I said, mm -mm, no. No, I drinking, be scared to death, go in the bathroom and eat a bar of coast soap. That stuff tastes terrible. It's for putting on, not consumption. Believe the signs. I was scared to death of what my daddy would do even at nights. I'd be gone and doing things that was ungodly and undecent. What wasn't even human life. I'm doing all kinds of wickedness. And there was an unseen prayer going up to the yeah. God of heaven. Yeah. I'll tell you why I got in. I believe God heard the prayer I'm about to have a running spell right now. I had a mom and a daddy that prayed for me. They knew my rebellious and wicked state. But yet God couldn't hear my prayer. But he heard the prayer of my parents. And thank God for that. Amen. 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 That's why I'm in. Some of y'all are 
in the same room. I look at Wayne Peel over there. I remember your mama years ago, uh, Miss Elizabeth Peel, and she was faithful at church. I remember going to your mom and daddy's house when you was a little bitty thing and meaning a snake and then turned up and married Teresa, and I can't believe Peggy and Irvin let it happen. <laughs> Some of y'all here didn't even know who Sister Sue's daddy was till just a few months ago. Come to find out, I knew the old man he used to come here to church son. He was a praying old told Carlos. Man, he was a prayer warrior. I guarantee you one of the reasons you're in. You had a praying daddy and mama. Of some of y'all in here, I've heard your testimony. Thank God for praying mamas and daddies. Thank God. Listen to me, parents. If you want your children to get in, they might not want nothing to do with God. Right. They might talk on their cell phone at church. They might disrespect you in the house of God and even the man of God. But don't you stop praying for them. Amen. You keep on praying for them. They'll get in sooner or later. Somebody's got to help them. And it might be your prayers that does it. We sing that song. If I could hear my mother pray again. If I could hear her tender voice as then. So glad I'd be would mean so much to me. If I could hear my mother pray again. That's the reason some of y'all are in. Right? Where's those mom and daddies at today that's going to help their kids get in? Number two. Let me tell you the second way I got in. I'm going to tell you how I got in. I had help. I didn't just have a praying parents, but I had powerful preaching. That's what got me in. I can remember as a little boy, two and three years old, at Content Revivals down on 134. His dad back then was like Machine Gun Kelly, except in the pulpit. And Daddy was like, <laughs> Some of y'all remember him back then. Wild man. I told Daddy, Daddy said, Son, what are you going to remember about me? I said, I'm going to tell everybody when you were dead and gone, you was a wild man. I can remember then being in some of the church services that I was in as a little boy. I remember some of the preachers that I come up under. I was thinking about them the other day. Some of the men of God that I that had an impact on me. Right. They were preachers of the gospel. One of them was Vance Edwards. I'll never forget him. Another one was Flame Balkum. I'll never forget him. Another one was Ray Moon. I'll never forget him. Another one was uh, Bill, uh, Jimmy Joe Thompson. I'll never forget him. Another one that I remember Dad being around some was Dusty Rhodes. And I'm not talking about the wrestler. Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> a lot of these older men of God that God used as I was a little boy. I can remember sitting and listening to them preaching. And the chills would come up my back as a little kid. I couldn't get away from the voice of the thunder and the pound of the pulpit as they proclaimed the truths of God's Word. And I can remember as it go in my ears and the thunder of the Holy Ghost would reach down in my soul. I want to stop and say this. Thank God for old-fashioned, old-time preachers that still preach the truth. That's what got me now, as long as they got a little piece of paper, and as long as they come from the right seminary, Amen. it's not about if they got the anointing of God on their life. Yeah. It's not right. if they're accepted socially, right. Right. and everybody likes them. <coughs> and don't stir the waters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> they really need is for some little old redneck country boy that don't have no more sense to believe that Bible. They ain't got no stamp of approval for some college or seminary to come in there and let the Holy Ghost be the guide and preach to that people and watch God do something. Yes, sir. I've then come to the conclusion the reason a lot of churches ain't stirred, there's no power in the pulpit, and the reason there's no power in the pulpit is because most churches are run either by the deacons or by a certain family that keeps it choked down to the point where God can't do nothing. And then they blame the preacher because nothing's happening and nobody's being stirred up. I'm glad Bethel Baptist Church is not a mama papa run church. It's a church run by the Holy Ghost through the under shepherd and God does what He wants. It ain't run by no family or group of deacons. This is God's building. Most places couldn't stand being stirred. Powerful 
preaching. You know what? We hear a lot about Oliver Green. Most people sitting in here, I dare say, can sit under his preaching. You're right, brother. You're right, brother. He was a high skinner. But he doesn't look. Most people want to come to church for two or three reasons. Either one, they was raised there. Number two, their family's buried there. Or number three, they was invited to go there. Number four, it's a growing church and they want to be where the crowd's at. Very few go because of the power of God and the movement of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So we go for the popularity contest. It's a political game for most. It's a political game. It has nothing to do with God at all. But what we need back in our pulpits is preachers full of the power of God right, and not persuaded right. by the people and preach the truth in love. Amen. I got in because of powerful, old-fashioned, old-timey, Holy Ghost anointed preaching. Amen. I wonder if most people today could really tell. I had one man come up and tell me one time, it's probably the reason why he don't go to church here no more, and I hate it. But he told me one time, he said, I'm just going to tell you. And I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Politics has no place in the pulpit. I said, you mean in God don't have no place in politics? I separate. I said, no. <laughs> no, it's not. God ain't in your politics. You got problems. Amen. God, you can have every part of my life, but leave my political party. I'm going to vote for a baby killing Muslim, but I love you, Jesus. Right, I, I'm going to vote for this whatever. God not have no influence. Just because my daddy and mama was a Republican or a Democrat. <laughs> I don't care if your mama and daddy was a Republican, independent, Democrat. I could care less. I vote for God. Yeah. And most people can't stand that. That's why they don't want their water stirred up. We need, I'm saying we need to get back to God. Our waters need to be stirred. Powerful preaching. Let me tell you another way I got in. I had more help. It wasn't just powerful preaching and praying parents, but it was personal pondering. You know, my wife got to lay in bed. She remembers some of this. 22 years old, almost 23, or maybe I was 23. Got to think about creation. I got to think. Now, how's that big old world standing out there in the middle of nowhere on nothing? Here's a big wall that just happened by a big bang. It's perfectly round. We're all standing on it, running a thousand miles an hour, and nobody's being slung off this big ball. And the people on the bottom ain't falling off. How's that happen? Say that in the middle of nowhere. It's been cloud, sun, everything. And I'm thinking now. Now. Then I got to thinking back. Now, let's see. When I was four years old, my dad was pastoring Lane Street Baptist Church in Kannapolis, North Carolina, and I remember him baptizing me. And I was like, you no, know, I don't. I was baptized, but that really, I don't remember about it. And then I got to thinking about, you know, I've always heard Jesus is coming again. This got to play on my mind. I tried to justify my little baptismal experience with, you know, getting in the water, that that was what was going to get me. I got thinking, you know, Jesus is coming again. I got an eight month old daughter in there, which was Kate. And I said, if Jesus comes tonight, all the babies, I believe, are going up to heaven with God. I believe He's going to let the babies die and go to hell. I believe there's an age of accountability. I don't know when it is, but when a person is responsible enough to understand the plan of salvation, that's the age of accountability. It might be five, it could be fourteen. I don't know. Some people never come to the age of accountability. I don't know. But I'm thinking, what would I do if I got up and I picked up the phone and called my daddy and no answer? Or if I went to the crib of my baby girl, she's gone. Or if I called my mama 
nobody's there. And I began to ponder these things over and over in my mind. And I said, you know what? I come to the conclusion the Holy Ghost was dealing with me and that was His way of getting me in. And I started, I couldn't sleep at night. I'd wake up in the middle of the night with sweats. And I was 23 years old and I was like, oh my God, I'm going crazy. And what it was, it was the Holy Ghost. He was causing me to think and evaluate my own heart and soul. Thank God for them times. That's what got me in. And the night I got saved, that night at 8 o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, all of that come to a head. And I said, I don't know who's holding this world up. And I don't know a lot of things. I've got a lot of answers, a lot of questions. But this one thing I know, I'm tired of tossing and turning in my bed. And if you say Jesus is the only way, then I'm going to trust Him. And I'll put my faith, my trust in Him. And ever since that night, there's been no more pondering about a lot of those things because Jesus was the answer to all of my questions. That's good. That's good. So I got in. And then it was by a passionate preacher. Parents praying, powerful preaching. Personal pondering. Passionate preacher. A week before, I went and heard from Jeff Lamb in a meeting down at the Eliezer Methodist Church. Me and Mark Hill. I could care less about no one down there. In the middle of nowhere. God has in some way drawn me. Got down there and sat in that thing and that meeting. Oh, Melvin Morton was preaching. That's who it was. And he made this statement. If there's any doubt in your mind, you're probably not. I left that meeting that night and that's what stuck in my head. Because my mind was full of doubt. I couldn't trust my baptism. I couldn't trust my daddy's preaching. None of that was an anchor that would hold me. I felt myself sinking because I wasn't in. And none of that other stuff was helping me get in. So for about a week, I pondered that. And then on a Thursday night of the next, no, that was the next night, I think, Jeff Lamb bypassed the revival and come on a soul-winning mission instead of going to church. That's how it was. He went to Mark Hewitt's house first and he talked to Mark about the Lord and Mark trusted Christ that night at his house. I didn't know it. He left his house, he came to my house. I'm talking about a preacher that stayed out of church revival to go witness to two guys that was hell bound and he knew it. I thought I was in, but he seen I was helpless. I, I couldn't get in on my own. I couldn't do it. I wanted to, but I didn't know how. Amen. He came to my house that night. Go ahead, preacher. About 8 o'clock on a Thursday night, I said, I've been laying by this pool a long time in my mind. I'd been tossing and turning for about three months. I didn't have nobody to help me get in the water. It was being stirred, but I still couldn't get in. I can see the doorbell ringing now. That great big old grizzly bear of a man standing there on my door. I said, oh my God, what in the world is going on? Jeff come in, had old Hubert Hughes with him. He's dead and gone now. Kayla was a little baby, and I can see old Hubert he come in wearing his overalls. He had a breathing problem. You saw y'all remember him. He'd breathe real heavy like that, lived over here on Garantown Road. And I love that man. And he was holding my little baby girl. <laughs> he was sitting there rocking her as yeah. Brother Jeff would talk to me about the Lord because God had ordained that for yeah. He got the attention of my daughter while the preacher could help get me in the pool. And I was sitting there at that table and Jeff laid his Bible down. He said, son, I want to know something. Any of y'all ever knew Jeff Lamb? That's just the way he was. He said, son, I want to know something. Are you saved? I said, I don't know if I am or not. He said, I'll tell you how you can get in. And he told me, went through the plan of salvation. He told me that anyway. I believe I was saved before he even got done. That night I trusted Christ as my Savior. I was so confused it took me a week to figure out that what had happened to me was I got saved. I thought I'd just rededicated my life, but something unusual had happened to me. I began to hear the birds singing different. For well, the first time I prayed with my family, I had a hunger for the Word, and I wanted to be in the house of God. He helped me get in, and thank God for preachers. That's helped some of you get in as well. Amen. 
That night I got on the phone. First person I called was my daddy. Yes, sir. I was crying like a baby. Yes, sir. Never had cried in front of my wife. I was macho, you know. <laughs> my wife, she even resented me after that until she got saved. She said, no, I didn't marry no hum and a hum and a Christian. Can y'all see my wife say that? <laughs> she did, and she did. She married an old redneck country boy that was hell bound and didn't care. And after I caught my daddy, I called my mom, and I caught a Willow Little, who's a Willow Williams. I'm going to have her funeral today and be a part of it. She died Thanksgiving Day. I had to tell it. I couldn't help it. I had to share it. If anybody You're right, ever right. gets it, how can you keep it quiet? It's the greatest thing that ever happened. And I began to think. I said, well, in the world did I do this later? And I got to thinking, I couldn't have done it later. I couldn't have done it earlier. It was that time that I got in. And ever since I got in, I have regretted that I got in. I'm glad that I got in, and I wish you'd get in too. Matter of fact, if you need a little help, that's what I'm doing this morning. I'm trying to help you get in. Amen. <clears throat> the water's stirred. Don't you want in? Oh, well, look at all I'm going to lose. If I get in, you better believe it. A broken heart, a guilty conscience, you're going to lose all of this stuff. Fear of death and dying. Don't you want to lose that? But I'm going to lose some friends. No, you won't. You're going to gain a whole bunch more. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> Let me get back to my Bible. I'll show you something. I know we've got to go. We've got to go. We've got to go. I've got to be at a church at 1.30 and I've got an dinner engagement. <coughs> in verse 9, after he got in, he stood up. <laughs> then he straightened up. Verse 10 and 11, you'll see, he was stirred up. Verse number 14, though, is a beautiful verse. You'll see, he showed up. And afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple. Huh. It's exactly what happened to me when I got in. And I've been showing up ever since. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Now, here's a question. We're all here this morning. Is your water being stirred? If your water's been stirred, I sure would love to help you get in. And it's so wonderful if you ever do. And you can today leave here a new person. Let's stand to our feet. Miss Sue, come to the piano, please. Matter of fact,